Just Steve and TK today. 55 degrees, 8 o'clock, October 29th. Full moon last night. Did you see it? It was outstanding. I'm going to let T-Rex sleep in. I'm going to try something a little different this morning. I have my headset on, and I'm going to hold the camera farther away from me. Hopefully that just limits the audio to the headset. The moon last night. Bob working just down the road at the Four River Bridge at the power plant there sent in this. You can see all the different seas. You know, there's a map of the moon. Sea of tranquility. <laughs> all those dark spots are seas of rain. I don't know a lot about that. Should learn more. Anyhow, extraordinary weather change today. You can see some sky waves. See the sky waves? That's a, a result of shear in the atmosphere. What we have this morning is called differential advection. We talked some days about, hey, where are you going? Oh no, cat chase, stop. <laughs> this is where the rabbits are. What tree do you want to be tied around, Steve? How's my audio sound as I go into the wind from the Northeast? You are going around this branch. Try not to disappear on me. Oh, this was not part of the plan. All right, that's yours. All right, where were we? Oh, look at the sky waves, sky waves, sky waves, boat waves. Pull the phone away from you, see if it works better. Planes landing, okay, yeah. If you're a pilot, pilot of a boat, you're headed into the northeast wind because you know there's still some fish out there. And if you're the pilot of an airplane landing over, let's choose Long Island because that radar has the best echoes this morning. It's already raining well off to our west over there. Uh, here's the velocity azimuth display. We like to show this. It shows how the wind changes from down near the ground to up in the sky. And this morning, the wind down near the ground up to about 2,000 feet is from the east at 20 knots or greater. And then way up in the sky, up around 20,000 feet and higher, the wind is from the west at 75 knots. So imagine flying, <laughs> say you're flying uh, uh, into Logan Airport. You've got this tailwind at about 75 knots. Then you come down below 5,000 feet and almost no wind. And then all of a sudden it's from the east at 20 knots. And pilots have to be quite used to that. All right, I'm backing back into the the shelter away from the wind here. All right, widen that out. And now discuss, weather discussion. Yesterday was all it could be. First dry Saturday since early September. And we did have the warmest October 27th, <laughs> is that right? In our life. Yesterday, it was 80 to 85 degrees, even on Cape Cod. Not a cloud in the sky, just so pretty, and hardly any wind, which is just remarkable because, again, talk about differential advection, advection being the movement of air with rain or snow or warm or cold, whatever is advecting uh, today, it's differential. Anyhow, yesterday on Mount Washington, the wind gusted to 92 miles per hour, strongest wind gust in weeks. Uh, that was the colder air coming in in northern New England. So this morning in Rangeley, Maine, it's 32 degrees. And then down here in southern New England, we're in the 50s. So there's quite a temperature gradient. So here in southern New England, it's a shallow cold. High pressure comes in, low uh, level cold air comes in from the northeast, and it, it undercuts that warmth. And so the warm air high in the sky, that wind from the southwest, is overrunning. You have warmer air up in the sky, which is less dense, coming over the top of the colder air down near the ground. It's overrunning, and there's a wall of rain and ice up at some certain level coming at us uh, from west to east today. Uh, we're going to have a couple waves of low pressure coming in here. High pressure to your north today means it's mostly cold precipitation, but the, the snow level is pretty high up. I mean, Mount Washington is 20 degrees this morning, but higher than that, I think it's a little warmer. So we could have a, a situation with sleet and freezing rain in our mountains, say Killington, Mount Mansfield. Now, once you get north of Rangeley there, that's gonna be cold enough for snow, but this first pulse of energy coming at us, here's the HRRR, <laughs> high resolution rapid refresh. Uh, you can see the first batch is coming across 
with a wave near the south coast. That's today, tonight, and in some spots, we may get more than an inch of rain. Temperature's still in the 50s. And then another wave comes in tomorrow. That one goes across central New England. So now it's a little warmer in southern New England, so not as wet as today and a little less cold. But in northern New England, it is cold enough for accumulating snow from just about Jay Peak to Mount Washington to Rangeley, Maine, uh, where it, you want to see the, uh, the, the blue is the snow, the, the green is the rain. All right, now let's go to the snowfall accumulation potential. And you can see a little spot of it there in Vermont today. And then uh, tomorrow, it really starts adding up right at the Canadian border there, very close to Jay Peak and Mount Washington. And then uh, north of Sugarloaf, it looks like. Sugarloaf probably gets mostly snow. And the guidance says, uh, the HRR anyway, has uh, 5 to 10 inches in northwestern Maine. Snowmobile country. <laughs> of course, it's been so warm, that's not really going to accumulate that much, but... Uh, it's going to be a snowy day in northwestern Maine tomorrow, the first winter weather advisory of the season uh, for northern Maine. And then we all get into cold air advection on Monday night and Tuesday. Uh, it's going to go to freezing in much of central and northern New England, get a day off, the sun is out. And then what about that midweek potential merging storm, TK? You said there was going to be a phasing of the streams. I said that the Euro said that there would be a phasing of the streams, and I said the GFS was dry, and it bears watching, and it will probably come out as a blend. Well, <laughs> now the GFS is actually a little wetter than this. This is the Euro for Wednesday. I think yesterday's assessment was pretty good. There may be some rain or snow in the air, but the phasing of the streams is happening too far to the east and we just get a glancing blow. It's a cool, wet day on Cape Cod. Maybe some snowflakes in Worcester County if the precip gets far enough north. And northern New England's just freezing and cold and dry on Wednesday. So it turned out that, so far anyway, it's not done yet. There's still two days to go. That it was a blend of the dry GFS and the hyperactive nor'easter of the Euro. So the blend of the models usually does the best. <laughs> I, I can't even tell you how different the models are for next weekend into uh, early uh, next week, talking about eight days now out to election day, where the, uh, the Euro is fairly dry and kind of cold. <laughs> There's a system coming at us next weekend. It kind of divides New England right there. This is the Euro. Uh, the GFS is kind of crazy. The GFS is going for uh, feet of snow. All right, there it is. I just I can't stop myself. 16-day snowfall forecast for the Northeast. <laughs> Get it. 47. I show this just for comedy, really, uh, and to show you how high the stakes are right now because uh, this is an El Nino year, and we have the systems coming off the Pacific. And wait, stop with the Pacific, Tim. Rewind a little bit here. Let's go to the Atlantic because the hurricane season is still going. And it looks like we may have tropical storm. Well, Tammy is still out there decaying, post-tropical. Tropical storm Vince is in the cards now, east of the Bahamas. And tropical storm Vince, should it become named, whatever it is, it's going to be low pressure, is going to merge and phase with our Wednesday system. So that's why I was kind of hyper a few days ago. I mean, if we could have gotten a, a deeper, steeper negative trough, that would have incorporated into a mega storm for us here on Wednesday, but instead that goes off to our east. Okay, so that's the Atlantic part. And it's still in play next week, but I'm going back to the El Nino. The storm's coming onto the west coast, one after another, and about every three days or so. So that means we're gonna have a threat about every three days, and Canada is just so cold right now. So the end of this week, high pressure ends up to our south, and that usually warms us up pretty good, but the difference between the Euro and the GFS is the the GFS brings a cold front in before next weekend, and the Euro waits for after the weekend. Makes the difference between rain and snow next weekend, which would be the eighth weekend in a row with precipitation. All right, that was a lot. I didn't mean to get to 10 minutes. Steve taking off didn't really help that much. I wanted to talk about the garden. I mean, I've been working to put the garden to bed. Of course, you know I'm all over the place between Vermont, Cape Cod, Weymouth. Montauk daisies, eh, they're fading. That's what happens. And so I pulled most of the tomatoes. I saved uh, as many green ones as I could see. I was doing it as the sun went down. 
So the tomato, the garden's almost put to bed. I'll get to these this morning. I mean, I was picking for like an hour and just so fun. And you just keep going and going. They just keep coming and coming. So I get tomatoes for a while. Uh, something dug a hole right there last night. And this will be the last day for my nice peppers. These are beautiful peppers, aren't they? They're not going to really like the weather today. I hope you enjoy the weather today. We're going to end up getting soaked <laughs> in southern New England. Uh, so leave you with, uh, I was going to say I'm going to leave you with a sunset, but instead I saw the moon coming up over there. So we'll go from uh, Cape Cod getting things done, doing a little winterization to the moon coming up. It's a long time lapse. I'm going to turn about 25 minutes into about 30 seconds with the moon. So it's a slow edit. So that's why my out the door weather more comes out so late because uh, I try and make it as fun as I can with as many graphics as I can. And the sun did come up below the cloud for a time this morning. That was gorgeous. Maybe I'll, I'll find a sunrise shot here uh, to lift for you. Otherwise, it's going to be a fun time lapse today. Again, wind at the bottom of the atmosphere from the east and northeast, cold, being overrun by wind from the west and southwest, relatively warm. Where does that line go? Steve went over. Oh, great. Another Steve chase going on. Talk to you later. Oh, where did he go? Oh, by the way, this is called winged euonymus. My eye naturals told me burning bush. It's invasive. It's very pretty. It's also a good hiding spot for a cat. Where's the cat go? Come on, Steve. This way. Come on. Come on. Where are you? Come on, Steve. Come on. There we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Get me in trouble. Steve. 75 degrees at lunchtime, Cape Cod. Doing some chores. Geraniums came indoors. I don't think I'm gonna drain the hoses today. Other things to do, I'll try and propagate a few of those. And this gorgeous day continues. Still with remarkably light wind. iPhone 15, yeah, great. <laughs> Hot. So reworking this, finally get the grass to grow in the slate. Some ornamental grass, <laughs> I planted too close. Stuff goes fast, doesn't it? Grows fast. And uh, some pumpkins that kind of grew by themselves, or whatever you call these things, perfect for the season. And next year's phlox. And this hydrangea from the rescue garden. We'll all be expanding. Grass seed that was put down, I don't know, five weeks ago. Came up nice, all natural watering. Hasn't really rained down here. Is it gonna snow before it rains again? <laughs> Not on Cape Cod. It's done. Outside shower is turned off. Always a sad day. Could have left it, but you don't wanna have to do it at the last minute, especially if you're 90 miles away. It's raining leaves today. 75 degrees. Today's tour takes us to Harwich, West Harwich, not that far from Herring River, where my dad used to go out with Nat Wixon uh, to the Weirs. Uh, looking at the, the flora, if this was your rose, what would you do? <laughs> would you keep it? Because, look, it's trying. Focus. High above Whitman's Pond back in Weymouth, and it is pouring acorns on our head right now here. At our flannel party, we thought it was going to be a little cooler, so we organized a flannel party. <laughs> Instead, it's like 75 to 80. I'm trying to find a woolly bear caterpillar because the, the crowd wants to know what the woolly bear is saying. And this looks like a good environment to find them. I'll find one. Whitman's Pond, Woodvine Island. I didn't even know we had power boats on Whitman's Pond. Guess we do. Oh, that cloud's getting bigger and closer. That's pretty cool. And in other news, look at this flashback. Remember watching the Bruins on TV before cable? <laughs> Some people still can. We just heard an explosion over there. Someone's got like an M80 or something. Or a cannon. 
It's a gender reveal. <laughs> it's a Ah, gorgeous. What a day. What a fun party. We've got a playful dog and we've got a, a bounty of food. Thank you, Alex, for hosting us today. This is so fun. Who wants to be on YouTube tomorrow? What's your name? Where are you from? Samantha Fox. Nice to meet you. Samantha Fox? Come on. No. Is yes. that for real? Yes. Wow. I've heard of you. You're ahead of me on Google. You're I way am. up there. I am. Nice to meet you, Samantha. Nice Hope to, meet to see you guys again. Love the weather. Cheers. Thank you. It's rare that I'm at a loss for words, but when Samantha Fox told me her name was Samantha Fox, <laughs> I was kind of floored. Didn't know what to say. I should have said, so Samantha, do you have any questions about the weather? Actually, earlier she did have a question about the weather. She said, how's the winter look? Based on the woolly bear caterpillar forecast, black up front, black in the rear and brown in the middle, I would say it looks like a, a a cold start and then getting a little warmer but in the coldest part of winter it's still cold and then colder in the spring and she actually googled the woolly bear and came up with moderate <laughs> so samantha helped me with the winter forecast by googling woolly bear caterpillar forecasts and that second one down there moderate winter that is the forecast uh, but the this evening's forecast is for a serious drop in temperature so i wanted to get home before the sun went down and tend to the the worm farm a little bit and also pick the last of these beauties as it's getting colder so final harvest of the season for the tomatoes uh, including the green ones so the green ones will turn so i will have uh, some thanksgiving tomatoes halloween tomatoes and thanksgiving tomatoes and very nice to meet you samantha and everyone at uh, alex and travis home great day again today should we just call it an evening? Yeah, I think I will. And I'll just give you a time lapse of the sunset from my web camera. Oh, forget the sunset time lapse. This is an unexpected treat. The moon does not usually come up this far north that I can see it from the backyard. A uh, special hunter's moon time lapse. Sorry, the color doesn't come out a little bit better. It's getting dark. Six o'clock. Sun goes down, moon comes up, same time. That's full moon. There's actually a, an eclipse happening over in Africa and Europe. Lunar eclipse. Just past 20 minutes and you can see Jupiter just came up on the lower left down there. Some green dot. The iPhone green dot. Let's uh, widen out to one time zoom. That's what it looks like. <laughs> so the moon is really small even though it looks really big. It's all relative, right? Do some more. Keep it going. Go a little higher. Watch Jupiter come up next to the flag now. That was about uh, 38 minutes condensed. It's just about dark outside. Jupiter right there in the left, below the moon. All right. 
<laughs> That's what it looks like. 0.7 zoom. Sorry. How, how low can I go? Uh, 0.6. Oh, that's 0.5. Oh, that's 0.5. All right. And here's one time zoom. Actually, looks better at one zoom, doesn't it? Should I let it go until the camera dies? Which is pretty close. <laughs>